الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي الا ولا نحدان الله وصلى الله على سيدنا حبيبنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Respected brothers and sisters, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, as He is most worthy and deserving of our praise. We ask Allah and we ask Allah alone to guide us, to, to prevent us from being misguided and from misguiding others. We ask Allah to keep us safe and healthy and our community safe and healthy, our families, our loved ones, and the society at large. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his noble prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam to bless his noble companion and his his family and the righteous everywhere. Ameen. Allah ta'ala, God Almighty in the Qur'an exposes to us and tells us and informs us of, of conversations that will occur in the life hereafter, in the akhirah. And in the Qur'an, there are many of these conversations that we are informed of. There are conversations between Ashabu nar wa Ashabu jannah between the, those, the, uh, those who dwell, the, the dwellers of paradise and the dwellers of the hellfire. We are also informed by Allah about conversations that occur or that will occur between Allah, God Almighty, and the, in, in the inhabitants of the hellfire. Those who find themselves in the afterlife in damnation and punishment for the life that they live. And one such conversation that I want us to reflect on today, brothers and sisters, is one that is found in Surah Al-Mu'minun, which is the 23rd chapter of the Quran, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala, kam labithum fil ardi adadan sinin. He will say, God will say, how long did you dwell in this earth? How long do you think that you dwell, that you lived in this world, in this life? And he's asking and he's talking to those who find themselves in punishment and in akhirah, in the hellfire. And they will say, Alu, لَبَثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْدَ يَوْمًا فَاسْعَلُوا فَاسْعَلُوا الدَّائِنِ الْعَادِينِ Excuse me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the response that Allah receives from these inhabitants of the hellfire is that perhaps we dwelled on the earth a day or maybe a portion of a day. Ask those who keep account of these things. They don't know for sure. But what they do know is that it felt like a day or perhaps a portion of a day. And the conversation continues, and Allah affirms that, that you are here, that you lived this life for fleeting moments of time. But I want us to pause and reflect on that exchange that we mentioned here from Surah Al-Mu'minun, that conversation that occurred, or that will occur. That the people, the dwellers of the inhabitants of the hellfire, and Frankly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking anyone, potentially any one of us, how long did you live this world, in this world? How long was your existence, your life as you knew it? And we will all potentially respond by saying perhaps a day or maybe a portion of a day. Because that is how we as human beings assess and interpret time. The last time that I was here for khutbah, I just so happened to be talking about, in a different context, this idea of time. And there we mentioned that, or we discussed that, in, the, in our tradition there are multiple words that are employed for time. In the Qur'an, time as a concept is referred to by many different words or expressions. And in the Arabic language, when there are a multiplicity of words for one thing, it underscores the import, the importance of that idea, that concept. Waqt, dahar, asr, zaman, 
These are all words that employ or refer to time. They're, and they're employed in the Quran and in the prophetic teachings of the Prophet Time is important. It is of importance. Because we as human beings, brothers and sisters, are, are temporal beings. That idea of a temporal existence. Which means that we live a life that is defined and that is in time. That is defined by time and is in time. And the very notion of temporal makes us think of what? Temporary. Because this world is ephemeral, is temporary. That is the essence, that is the nature of hayat dunya of the life of this world, is that the life of this world is temporal. The akhirah is everlasting. The afterlife is everlasting. But yet this temporal existence this temporary existence has consequences for the life hereafter, for all of eternity. But those who study time, they talk about time or how we analyze time in one of two ways. There is what is known as prospective time and there is what is known as retrospective time. Prospective time is time that you live right now. If I ask you, if I put you in a room that has no clock, that has no window. And I ask you to tell me when a minute has expired. Most of us would probably do a pretty good job, a pretty accurate job of telling us when a minute has transpired. But if I put you in that same room and, tell, and, and ask you to tell me when 10 years has expired, you would have a more difficult time. This is that idea of prospective time and retrospective time. Another example of prospective versus retrospective time is, imagine most of us who are over 40 years old can think of their last decade that they lived as seeming to have, to have transpired so quickly. Where did the last 10 years of my life go? Where did my 40s go if you're in your 50s? Where did, where did the 50s, where did my 50s go? Some of us who are younger probably have, will have a little bit more of a difficult time. And that's not because time is being measured differently or is passing differently. A decade is still a decade for a 20-year-old, a 30-year-old, or a 40-year-old, or 40-something-year-old. But what is different is how we retrospectively look at time. My 20s felt like a decade. My 30s and now my 40s seem to pass far more quickly because of how, of the events that have transpired, how much I have changed in a decade versus how much I changed as a teenager or as a 20-something year old. And that's again how we look and analyze and conceptualize time. And I want us all, brothers and sisters, as an exercise, I'm going to conclude with this, is to, I imagine that all of us, unfortunately, have lost someone that we care very dearly, of, dearly about. Whether it's a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, a child, perhaps, tragically. But regardless, all of us have experienced loss. I can reflect on the loss of my father, someone that I spent 40 years almost of my life with until he passed away. He lived to the age of 62 years old. I spent, as I said, 40 years of my life with my father. You think of someone that you have lost, someone that you spent time with. And if I were to ask all of us to take inventory, to journal all of the memories that you have of that person, all of the life experiences that you experienced with that person, the advice that they gave you, the experiences that you shared, how they ate their food, how they spoke, their voice even. If I think about my father, I would be hard pressed, I would find it difficult if I were tasked to writing that journal to maybe come up with a month of time as we know it. Right? 30 days, 24 hours each day. I would be difficult to try 
and journal 40 years of my life with this person that I lived. And I can't even come up with a month in terms of the advice, the life experiences, the memories that I have of that person. And that, brothers and sisters, right there is the nature of this world, is the nature of this life. It is that conversation that we spoke of in Surah Al-Mu'minun. How long do you think you lived? A day? Maybe a portion of a day? Because that's how time passes us. You think about a loved one. How long did you spend with that person? A day? Maybe a portion of a day. And so we can't do anything, brothers and sisters, about retroactive time. Time that has already passed. Time that has already transpired. Those that we have lost. What we can do, and that we must do, because it has bearing of our, for our afterlife, for the life of eternity, for a life that is not temporal, for a life that is unending, is that we have to take account and be mindful of prospective time. Time right now moving forward. How do you live your day-to-day -day life right now? The relationships that you have, the time that you spend with loved ones, right? It should haunt us that the task that we had of thinking of a loved one and the memories that we have, those, that task may be something that your children will have to do. My father is no longer with me, right? They'll think 20 years from now, 30 years from now, tomorrow, who knows? And they'll think of the life that you've left behind, the legacy that you left behind, the experiences, the wisdom, the advice you gave them. And they too will say, how long did I spend with my father, with my mother? A day? Maybe a portion of a day? And so each and every one of us can only make use of prospective time, time moving forward, and how we choose to live our our day-to-day -day life, the moments that Allah has blessed us with, right now. What is the legacy that we leave behind? What are those experiences? What are those relationships? What is the advice that we have instilled in others? What is the legacy that you will leave behind? What bearing will that ha have on your life in the hereafter? What bearing will that have in that conversation with our Lord? How long did you live in this world? What did you do in this world? That, that was of consequence, that was of meaning, that left a true legacy to those that are left behind. So I pray and I hope that we all reflect on and cherish the moments that we have, each and every moment, with our loved ones, with our community, with the, with, with the opportunities that we have to make the most of each and every existence, to turn to Allah and to foster that relationship. That is the most meaningful relationship with our Lord and our Creator. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq, keeps us safe, healthy as a community and as individuals. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم عمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو أطعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما همته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا بوافع عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا 
انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم انا نسالك رضاك والجنه ونعوذ بك من سقطك والنار سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين واقيموا الصلاه